Hey everyone, this is Keith Scott from out in Sydney, Australia. I'm one of the voices of Bullwinkle J. Moose. It's time to watch Relentless and Unstoppable. And so give it up for your main hosts, Douglas Kenny and Andy McPhee. Hey everybody, this is Doug Kenny and welcome to Relentless and Unstoppable. We have another amazing guest coming on the channel today, so please hit like and subscribe. And after this episode, please stay tuned to the RNU channel for more amazing guests. Let's get this on! Hey everybody, how you doing? Just a, a quick uh, little share of why I started Relentless and Unstoppable. It was for one very simple reason, because of Doug Kenny. Nothing to do with me at all, zero. I was just coaching Doug and he took on the coaching and mentoring and he made all the changes. He took all the suggestions from his his parents as well as my, my coaching, but it was all about Doug, his breakthrough and his weight loss, uh, he, his willingness to accept that uh, he is dealing with high functioning autism and, and other issues, but he's never quit, he's never given up. So we did one interview with him to share his story and then we decided to start interviewing other people. And Doug has now taken over the whole channel and he does all the interviews. He runs everything. He's just an amazing young man. So RNU was born from simply what an amazing young man Doug is and his story needed to be shared. So yeah, uh, what do you, did you ever meet any other cast members in, in 101 Dalmatians, like the adult ones, or? Oh, well, let's see. Uh, I can start off some names for you. Uh, David, for 101 Dalmatians, have worked with Lisa Davis, uh, who is the voice of the human woman. And later he met her at the 50th anniversary show at the studio. So Lisa Davis... You met Rob Taylor. Oh, Rob Taylor, yes. Uh, and right, in the voice of Roger, was a really good friend of David. Yeah, we worked together many years. He uh, uh, Queenie Leonard was one of the... Oh, yes, yes, yes. David's one of his best friends, Doris Lloyd. Oh, was a good voice in there. Um, who else did you meet? Oh, we just recently got to know Mimi Gibson, who was the lead puppy. Oh, yeah. I think he was on your show, right? Yeah, she had nothing but positive things to say about David. You know, I had her on the show recently, and um, she said that, you know, that it was an honor meeting you because she grew up somewhat regretting that she wasn't able to meet a lot, if not most of the the adult voice actors, you know. Ah, uh, yeah. I like her a lot, yes. And we only met her through some convention appearances, David. Maybe we just hit it off with Mimi. We just love her. Talk to her fairly frequently. Oh, she's so nice. So nice. Yeah, you know, it's just amazing how it's a small world and you never know who you're going to encounter, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and David did actually. I remember you were in a TV episode. I think Adventures in Paradise. With you did a you did a scene with Tom Conlon. And then indeed, yes, I finally met him. Yes. Yeah. What was Tom Conway like? Very much like his brother. I must say, I was so a little sorry for him because George Sanders really became a star, didn't he? And Tom Conway, although he was a fine actor too, and worked a great deal, never quite hit, hit the, the top of it as, as his brother did. They were all three nice actors. Yeah. Good, actor, good actor, very nice man. Yes. yes, they called him the nice George Sanders. You know, that uh, sort of tells you something about what people thought of George Sanders. Yeah, George Sanders apparently was not an easy actor to deal with. Conway was. The moment you met him, he just felt comfortable with him, you know. Yeah. I noticed that Disney, in, in one of the scenes involving Sergeant Tibbs, did a reference to What's My Line with uh, Tom Conway as the voice. Well, it's good. They got multiple voices out of him. <laughs> yeah, and um, I think it was What's My Crime. Yeah, yes, that's right, that's right, yeah, yes. 
Yeah, and just just wondering, um, why did Disney credit you as Dave Frankum when you preferred David at the time? Mm -hmm. No, and I was not happy about that. Just some mix-up between my agent telling him David and somebody in the casting department just made me think I was never Dave again. I really, every time I see her, oh, that's all right. I'm not Dave, I'm a Dave. <laughs> Except there was one person who did call you Dave who it was a of panic hearing. It was Charles Bronson. Um, oh, right. yes, yes. So yes. was trying to pass interviews off to you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so what was the reception of 101 Dalmatians like when it came into theaters? Gee, that's all we have for Relentless and Unstoppable. So tune into the next episode to hear more amazing stories from amazing guests. This is Keith Scott from Sydney, Australia, saying so long, and uh, I'm smarter than the average bear. Gee.